Hello, how are you? Welcome to the corner. Thanks, it's been a while. I'm yeah. glad to be back. Well, we're glad you're here. And uh, I guess you've been doing this since you started, but I hear that Keep On Being Me is coming out in September. It is. September 4th is the official date. Great. So I'm um, looking really forward to that. And I've been telling a lot of people that this album seems to be a lot more me than the first album would be. Well, I was going to ask, it's what's weird. the difference between dirt, uh, Dust... Dirt and Diesel. Dirt and Diesel. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Keep On Being Me. <laughs> well, Dirt and Diesel was, um, you know, I got... Dirt and Diesel was kind of just a catalog of me learning how to write songs. And I, I got into Texas Country, um, man, probably 15 years ago, I guess it was. Yeah, and that was the time yeah. when, when and the charge so, started and the surge started. Right, and I was trying to write songs. I wanted to be a songwriter, but I was writing songs like you hear everybody else writing. And uh, and I just think I did it kind of backwards because the first one was, I mean, it was I had some stories about that in my life in there. But for the most part, it was, it was just kind of trying to fit in with the the drinking songs and the partying songs and uh -huh. having fun and the next album I was just really getting into writing about things from my life and this one doesn't really sound exactly like what everything else is it's kind of walking a line between uh, what's popular here in Texas and what may be popular other places but it's um, it's definitely just more songs about my life uh -huh. there's probably maybe one or two songs that are completely hypothetical the rest of it it's something I took a page from my daily routine and wrote a song about it. <laughs> well, they say write about what you know, and of yeah. course, what you know starts in New Waverly. Yep. On a dairy farm. On a dairy farm. So, do we have songs about cows? There's a song, <laughs> yeah. There's a there's one called Farm Hands uh -huh. on there, and that one I didn't realize I was doing it at the time, but it's it's about my dad. Um, and then uh, there's another the Keep On Being Me track uh, talks about my life on the farm. Oh it's, really? It's, it's, okay. it's, it's autobiographical. Is that that's how you say it? That's how you say <laughs> it. And and so you really did write about what you know. I did. And what you are. I did, and what I am today. Yeah. There's uh, the current single um, on the radio. Uh huh. It starts off with um, why is coffee so hard to make? There's too many steps when you're barely awake, and <laughs> that's my morning every morning. I wake up and make breakfast for the kids and my wife every morning before they go to work, no matter what time I got in the night before, because I can always go back to sleep. Right. Um, and so, you know, there's always the burning of bacon and trying to find socks for the kids before the bus gets there, <laughs> or if you have to take them to school and you finally get out the door and you've got a flat tire. I mean, it's even those fun, more, less serious songs, they're just fun and it's, they're, they got a good hook and catchy beat, but there's still a lot of truth in the lyrics to yeah. them, too. Just from my daily life. So. Well, it sounds like you enjoy your life and writing <laughs> oh, about I it. I do. I do both, yes. Yeah. Well, that's good. What is something about New Waverly that everyone should know? Oh, boy. Um, well, it's a small population. We had 936 people when I was there, yeah. and we all knew each other. Um, New Waverly, everybody knows, everybody knows, you know, everybody yeah. knows everybody. Um, and like any small town, I guess, when you're, when you're in high school, if you go to get in trouble, your every almost every kid's parents had a police scanner, or uh, whatever, because their because their husbands or their sons were in the uh, volunteer fire department. Yeah. So there were police scanners. So if anybody got in trouble, everybody in town knew. So yeah, New Waverly was just. I think it's the same for most small towns. Probably is that just everybody knows your business and everybody's, you know, they love to talk about everybody else's. Business too, but they but are looking out for you. They are looking out for you too, and it's a, it's a community that's they all work together, and no matter where you break down the road, you can, you know so and so that lives in that house, and they'll help you, they'll feed you, they'll whatever you know. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was. It's kind of just a, it's bigger now, you know, but it still has that, that, that community, I guess. Right. Well, how do you feel as a dad? Do you like that kind of a? Of an atmosphere for your sons, or I would, yeah, we we don't live in New Waverly now, right? And I would love there's certain aspects of it I would love and certain aspects that I like now, but um, I think that my parents would just kick us out of the house in the morning and we just travel. I mean, we just we go all over property, and uh -huh. um, this is in one of the songs too. But when the horn blew three times, you came back and it was time to eat or whatever your mom wanted. They would blow the horn and you'd come, you know? Yeah. And I wish my kids had that freedom. We have a ranch in Mahaya near Dawson and everything, and my kids get that kind of freedom every now and then. Yeah. We go up to the ranch and we just turn them loose, 
and uh, and they just wander and have fun. Well, it is a wonderful thing for a child. To have it is because when you're in the when you live when you're in the neighborhood, they don't want to be outside, uh -huh. and you got to don't want them to. There's busy cars on the freeway and or in the neighborhood and traffic and but on the farm, you you relax a little, they relax a little, and then they just go have fun and be kids. Yeah, you know? that's it's pretty perfect. cool. Do you have dogs? I, we have one dog. Um, she's a, um, 15. She's a Aww. lab. She's very overweight. She is very old. Um, so yeah, we do have one. She's been around with me and my wife since before the kids. So yeah, she's a she's, she's really a family member. A very big part of the family. Yeah. yeah. I mean that met metaphorically and physically. She's huge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, it's interesting just hearing you talk about that. I I think I understand why keep on being me is called that. Mm -hmm. That really is something you're interested in talking about. It is, and I. It's weird that to me. I didn't even expect the album to go the way it did. I um, I had some I had some help from somebody, and uh, and I was gonna only be able to record five songs. Uh huh. And I had seven songs picked out. I had to choose five out of those seven because I thought that's all I was gonna be able to afford. And uh, luckily, an angel appeared, and uh, by the name of Dan Jostin. And he uh, he was able to help me afford to finish the whole album. Oh, wonderful! And I wanted to keep the same dynamics I had in place, so I put a one month uh, time lapse deadline on myself, and I wrote the next six songs in a month, and they all came out. I just had to reach into myself and just go, okay, what do you know? And I wrote it, and then "Keep On Being Me" was one of the last ones I wrote because I wanted a song. I knew some of my songs were a little different than my first album, kind of. The evolution of me, right. and um, and I knew some people might not like that, and then other people were gonna like that. So I just wanted to. Uh, there's one of my favorite things was I, I just write the stuff. You can call it what you want, and so I changed that to I just keep on being me. You can call it what you want, and I've had friends that uh, like Doug Miller is one of them, mm -hmm. and, uh, and a few other people. They're all I'd ask them for advice because I really looked up to Doug, and I got to oh, work sure. with him a lot. And I'd ask anybody, any of those guys that I really admire for advice. I'm like, you just do you, man. Just keep on doing you. It'll all be, it'll all work out fine. And so then it's just kind of all, you know, kind of came together came to be together. keep on being me. And I thought that's what I'm gonna do. I'll make sure this album is me, no matter what other people might think they know of me or what they, you know, because we all have different ideas of who people are. So I just put as much of me into the album, called it "Keep on Being Me," just so that people would know. No matter what, this is the real me. Good. <laughs> so. Well, if they want to find where you're playing and what you're doing, if they want to get their own copy of the album, mm -hmm. where do they go? JoshFullerBand.com. Well, that's pretty easy. Pretty easy, yeah. Okay. We just redid it. It's real eye catchy. Yeah. Um, all the social media links are at the top. YouTube and um, SoundCloud. You can even go preview. I probably shouldn't say this. You can preview the whole album right there on the website without having to pay for it. Wow. Just go listen that's to That's generous. Well, that's good. And can they give you feedback? I think they can, absolutely. Okay, great. Well, JoshFullerBand.com. Yes. Very interactive. Thanks for coming by. Hey, thanks for having me.